Well, hello there, Vlad here. Welcome to my studio and welcome to Master the Basics series, a series where I have a master of a certain craft, skill, things like that. And that person will teach us the basics of that certain skill. Today, I have the amazing RJ Ronquilio with me again, because we had him as the first guest uh, starting the whole video series. And today he's going to talk about slide guitar, and just happens he has recently released a slide guitar kind of lesson package. How do you call it? Uh, yeah. yeah, online course. course. Oh, yes, exactly. And he has this cool looking guitar with him, which is? This is a National Resophonic uh, Triolian, <laughs> Triol is the name of it. Wow. It looks really cool. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. So... Uh, I'm assuming people like know what slide guitar is at least roughly. You have a. I just dropped one of my slides. <laughs> you have a slide, yeah, and you use it over the fretboard instead of your fingers, so to speak. Uh, let's start with the first question, which is like, I want to start learning slide guitar. What kind of slide should I get? Does it make any difference? Um, it. It, when you're a beginner, it kind of doesn't make a difference, but I do have mm. suggestions. Um, I prefer glass slides yeah. just because uh, they sound and they feel really nice. Mm. Um, although my very first slide when I started was a, a cheap metal slide. Mm. And I think it was because it was a cheap metal slide that I didn't really get into it that mm. much because it didn't, it didn't sound good to me. Mm. Um, but the more I got serious about it, the more, and I was trying different slides. I tried brass. I tried uh, porcelain, uh, stuff like that, um, and ceramic. Mm. And when I got uh, a glass slide, particularly one that was thick, mm. or uh, what I say, heavy walled, so like a thick walled slide, yeah. um, that's when I was like, wow, this sounds amazing. Mm. Um, and so that's my favorite type of slide. And that's kind of like uh, on electric or a resonator, which usually has heavier strings mm. uh, than my electric uh, slide guitars. Um, but that's what I use predominantly for all of my playing. Yep. So my suggestion, and there's a couple of things that I suggest for beginners to do, but if you really want to get into slide the right way and mm. enjoy it, mm -hmm. I think that's a, a lot of beginners have a hard time uh, enjoying it because of things like slide or you know you get properly uh set up guitar mm. stuff like that um they try it and it doesn't sound good or it doesn't mm. feel right so they just kind of push it away and say it's not for me mm. but what i've learned is that uh certain things you can do to make it more appealing mm. when you first start out yeah so i guess nick I think you kind of touched on this already. Do you need to have a special guitar or will any guitar do? So um, any guitar will do. It's it's mm. more about the uh, the way it's set up. Yeah. And the, the, there's a couple of things I suggest with setting up a guitar easily because, mm. um, yes, I have multiple guitars that are set up just for slide mm. and stay that way. But uh, two things I, I suggest are... Um, Changing your string gauge to something slightly heavier. Mm. So if you have an electric yep. that you have uh, 10 gauge strings on, I would suggest bumping it up to 11, mm. 11 gauge because um, the uh, increase in tension, so it'll feel a little bit tighter. Mm. That can actually help get a better slide sound mm. um, because you're not getting loose, flappy strings. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then the... And the second thing I suggest is increasing your action or your string height. Mm. So, uh, you know, on electrics, it's pretty easy. On most guitars, you can adjust the action on, uh, on the bridge, on the saddles. Mm. Um, on acoustics, it's a little bit d more difficult. Um, sometimes you have to take it to a repair guy so they can uh, lift up the bridge, like mm. with a, a piece of shim or a small uh, thin piece of wood. Sometimes they'll go as far as adjusting the nut mm. a little bit higher which that's kind of extreme you don't really have to do that um, but just increasing the gauge of the strings can also 
help a little bit with the, the string height. Um, all And um, in a pinch, you can um, loosen the truss rod in your guitar mm. so you have a little bit more bow, and that creates a little higher action. Mm. So it's pretty easy to do. Um, the only thing is if you want to switch back and forth between slide and standard playing guitar, um, it's kind of you know a pain in the mm. pain in the butt that's why it's it's nicer to have one guitar dedicated for slide and mm. you can buy anything cheap you can buy a used uh electric or used acoustic for you know 100 under 100 bucks anywhere mm. and just keep that as your slide guitar just to, to learn you know mm. you so know, i suggest doing yeah. something like that yeah you know what i just found out what i'm going to do with my i have a harley benton t style kit that I've assembled yeah. a year ago. Haven't found any use for that until now. <laughs> I'm going to make there that a slide guitar. Thank you for the idea. Yeah. Yeah, put on put on 11 gauge strings, oh, yeah. tune it up to open E or open G or whatever, and um, that, that should fun. be good to go. That sounds fun. Yeah. Okay, so you have your, well, glass slide. You have your guitar set up. How would you start learning playing slide guitar? So, um, when you start learning to play uh, slide guitar, you have to um, choose what kind of tuning you're going to use. Mm. Um, you might think that learning slide in standard tuning uh, is good because I already know standard tuning and I just have to put the slide down. But, mm. you know, traditionally, slide guitar was played with open tunings mm. originally. It's just, um, just the nature of it. So this guitar is tuned to open E, which creates an open E chord. And um, if this was in standard tuning and I played that, you know, open E chord in first position mm -hmm. that we all know, that's the sound. It's yeah. the same sound as, you know, that shape. Mm. Um, so with that, it's cool because you can play, play, place the slide over any fret and get a major chord, right? Mm. But other than that, it screws up everything. All, all of your knowledge of where, yeah. you, where the scales are on the fretboard or other types of chords. Yeah. So it's almost like you have to relearn the guitar, but um, it's, it's really not that much more difficult because mm. in open E tuning, half of the strings are still the same as is in standard. So yeah. you have, this is kept from standard, the low E. Mm. Obviously the high E is in standard. <laughs> and then the second string B um, are the, still the same. So these, the third, fourth, and fifth strings are the only different ones. Um, and, you know, I have a, I ha in my course, I don't want to <laughs> pimp my course, but in my course I cover all of that stuff. I, I mean, feel free to do that. I'm Okay. <laughs> go, 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 go. How to play slide guitar available right now on Udemy. <laughs> Dot com. So, but I cover all of it. Now yeah. I'll just kind of briefly touch on uh, the stuff. But you know, as a beginner, <clears throat> it's more about getting the feel mm. first. Yeah. So one thing beginners will notice is that um, to play a note perfectly in pitch, you know, when we're playing with our fingers, we press our finger down on the space mm. in between the metal frets to, to, to get the pitch, right? But with slide, if I were to do that on a slide, it would sound a little bit flat. Mm. So, and the science is because when we're pressing down on the string, we're actually pressing the string against that metal fret. Yep. So, so that's where the pitch is coming from. So you want to have you want to lay your slide over the metal fret itself. So when you're playing slide, you're not playing on the wood on the fretboard between mm. the the frets. You're actually playing on top of the frets. Yeah. So that's probably the the hardest thing to wrap your your head across head around when you're a beginner is mm. learning that to visualize and and look at the metal frets now. Mm. To that's where you're putting your fingers on. Um, and so, um, intonation or, or being in tune is probably the, the main thing beginners will, uh, struggle with. Mm. And, and that's just a matter of like, say, 
you could either play with a tuner and try to slide into pitch mm. or, or I'll do some simple stuff where like you know it's a good for it's good for ear training so if this is open E I'll try to slide into an, an E note on any of the strings mm. and try to try to get that in tune and kind of see where okay the, my finger is directly over the metal fret mm. that's where it's in tune or here And kind of get used to that feeling and, mm. that, and that muscle memory and where your, your slide is on the mm. fingerboard. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you can play those few notes in pitch. How would you move forward from that? From that, um, well, once you get comfortable, uh, there's a couple techniques, uh, one of which, or couple, two of which is the muting of the string. Oh, so, yeah. Um, and that's also difficult because if you go from, you know, if you play with a pick mm. in standard tuning, you can play with a pick and play slide, but it, it's kind of harder, mm. at least for me. I prefer playing slide with just my fingers, like my bare fingers. Mm. And the reason for that is because I have all the other fingers to help me mute the string. Mm. See, when, when you have the slide on here, you're going to get a lot of extra noise yeah. from strings that you're not plucking because this is kind of basically like uh, a movable fret mm. on the top side of the string so it's going mm. to be <laughs> allowing other strings to ring yeah uh, when you're uh, playing you'll notice and um, two things you need to be able to fret with your left hand behind the slide so mm. if I have my slide here on the fifth fret you can't it's it's very slight but if I pl place my fingers down behind it to mute this mm. vibrating. I don't know if you can really tell. Oh yeah, absolutely. You can hear like the, uh, I don't know, the science of it. We'd have to ask Colin. But, yeah, true. <laughs> um, the, um, the, har the harmonics behind it or whatever. Yeah. So that's easy to do, right? Mm. You just lay your fingers down behind the fret. Mm. The hardest thing is with your right hand. So if you're playing individual notes, if I mm. was to play a lick without muting any of the strings, it would sound like this. And there's a lot of extra mm. notes ringing. Yeah. But if I wanted to play it cleanly, you know, it's sharp because Every note that I'm playing, I'm muting the rest of the strings mm. that I'm not using with either my thumb or other fingers or the, the base of my hand. Mm. So uh, when I hit that first note on the 12th fret of the first string, my thumb is on the second string muting that string. And then I, I lay the rest of my hand, I roll over the rest of my hand to mute the, the other four strings so that only the first string it can, can be ringing. Mm. And when I switch strings, I move everything down. And then I'm muting the high string with one of these fingers up here, mm. like my middle finger. So I don't know if you can see the right, what my right hand is doing, mm. but It's like jumping down mm. and, and individually muting all of the strings. Mm. And that's one thing to get used to because um, that's like a, a major part of the technique mm. of playing slide guitar cleanly. Mm. So how would you, like if you're playing in an open tuning, how would you form chords? I, I mean, you, you get a major chord with just the slide. But sure. if, if I would want to do, let's say, an A minor in that tuning. Right, so um, <clears throat> this would be our A. Uh, so we're, since we're an open E, yeah. we can use the same root notes that are on the, on the low string mm. to find our, our stuff. So A would still be on the fifth fret, and a bar across would be A major. Yeah. 
Um, to make it minor, it's a little bit hard to play. There's a couple things you can do. A lot of times if I'm actually playing different chords, I won't play all six strings to mm. play a chord. I'll play the main uh, top three or four strings. Mm. So, the third string is where the, the major third is. So we need to make that a minor third. So we need to change this down, down a fret to make it minor. So it would be... But to fret that, I would have to use my thumb and it'd be awkward. So <laughs> a lot of times I'll just take the first four strings mm. and play something like that if I'm comping or, or playing rhythm behind somebody. Um, but it's, it's kind of rare that I would do that. Um, another technique that some of the more advanced players will do, they'll use their slide mm. and then bar, or not bar, but fret behind the slide so the string is pressing lower than the slide. Whoa. <laughs> so it's weird. So yeah. you have to remember this is acting like a fret, another yeah. fret on the other side. So you're actually pushing the third string away from the slide and to the actual fret on the fretboard. So here's your major major chord. If I press down on the, the minor third on the third string... Now the only way to do that is you have to make sure your, your action, your string height, is high enough mm. to where you can actually have that distance mm. between here. Because if I press down too hard with my slide, I'm not going to mm. be able to hit that. I have to have a light touch. Mm. See? So it's a little bit uh, of maneuvering the, the touch of your slide to, mm. get, to be able to play that cleanly. It's weird. But yeah, yeah. that's I would just play uh, partial chords, not yeah, full six string makes chords. Makes a lot of sense because, I mean, you're not going to play like lead stuff for the whole song, I, I'm guessing at least. I guess it depends on the song as well, but like... Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean... And a lot of times, um, people will put on capos to mm. if they're in a oh, yeah. certain key to Thanks make it easy time. to have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what else? And there's like, like I'll play a a, a seven chord, mm. a dominant seven chord. Um, and then there's a couple. Uh, open chords you can do, mm. uh, which I cover in my in my course. They're kind of like fake four chords and five chords. <laughs> so this is your open E. Yeah. Like if we're playing a blues and I play, if I want to go to the four chord mm. A, I could go, or sometimes I'll do which is kind of like an inversion kind mm -hmm. of sound. And this fretting is actually, it looks like an uh, E dominant seven chord in mm -hmm. open tuning, but it's actually acts as my four chord. <laughs> and then a five chord, I would do this uh, chord, which is like a, a suspended type of chord. Mm -hmm. So there's it's and that's kind of stuff that you know you can find on the, on the web, just kind of basic mm. open chords and stuff. It's not really anything special that I discovered. <laughs> I didn't invent it. <laughs> I mean, it sounds cool and like with these things you could already like play the blues at least. And yeah, I mean, there's a lot of uh, like for instance, Derek Trucks. Mm. <laughs> I think was n known for you know having his guitar in open E and basically playing everything. In open yeah. <laughs> so I mean, you could actually sit down and learn, relearn the guitar mm. in open E tuning or any other tuning, and just kind of discover. Okay, I could play a pentatonic scale. This way. Mm. So I could play with without a slide and get around. And, mm. It's basically relearning the guitar if you, you know, but it's not like completely relearning. Well, well, sure. You, no, can, completely, you, you can find your way pretty easily. Yeah.
But yeah, there's definitely like what's happening with especially your picking hand. It's very different from like usually you mute with your palm maybe and a little bit with your left hand. But here's it's like it's different. Yeah, it's a lot of different uh, technique things you have to learn. And mm. it's I mean, there's multiple ways of playing it. You could play with the pick, like I said. Um, you could play with finger picks, which is another <laughs> interesting way of, of playing. Yeah. It creates a different timbre. Mm. Um, so it's you kind of have to learn a, a new kind of technique. Yep. But once you get it going, it's it's really fun and it's really a, mm. a different voice. Oh yeah, absolutely. And like, yeah, yeah it, you can just kind of attack all of the notes so differently because you can go from like top of the neck to a higher note and yeah. something you can It's cannot... like having a fretless guitar almost. Oh yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so yeah, to recap, uh, if you are new to slide guitar, get a glass slide. So that's what I suggest. Yes. Maybe raise the action on your guitar and think mm -hmm. if you have multiple guitars, think about of getting one that you can set up for just slide. Yeah, you can get a cheap one, like even yeah. like a, a cheap acoustic that might have horrible action is perfect for slide guitar because it already has the high action. Oh yeah, that's true. That actually actually make, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. And that will get you started. And obviously you also need RJ's slide guitar course. <laughs> yeah, he, go to udemy.com. Yeah, he didn't me, ask me to do this. I'm just doing it because, I mean, the guy knows what he's talking about. <laughs> Thank you, Vlad, for doing this, though. Absolutely. So, yeah, there you have it. That's how you get started. And, yeah, check out RJ's course as well. And links to his channel and his course in the description, obviously. If you have other ideas for Master the Basic series, let me know down below in the comments. I cannot guarantee I can get you all of the people you might mention. But I have some cool plans as well. So you might be surprised. <laughs> Teasers. I don't know. Awesome. And yeah, support the channel by getting a Catpick Studios t-shirt or Catpick Studios jam tracks. Uh, links below in the description for those as well. Like, share, subscribe, all the YouTube things. Thanks for watching and thanks to RJ once again. And I'm pointing over there because th that's where my laptop screen is. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for watching. I shall see you next time. <laughs>